at the end of the day, all any artist wants is to share their music with an audience. And the Tonic Ball lets artists do that in addition to being for a great cause and raising money to feed people who are less fortunate than us. My wife and I started Tonic Ball back in 2002. It actually probably wasn't exactly my idea, so there's a guy who is the head of the Master of Fine Arts program, the writing program at Butler, named Dan Barden, who I had a, a workshop with. He told me about a show in New York um, that a bunch of musicians did from time to time called The Loser's Lounge, where they all got together and covered the songs of some artist. And he said, wouldn't it be cool to do a show like that in Indianapolis, um, you know, cover Graham Parsons songs and give the money away? And I thought, yeah, that would be really cool. And my now wife and I were sitting around talking and I was telling her about this idea and she said, what would you, you know, like who would you give the money to? And I said, I don't know, I, but I can't think of anything that I think is more important than feeding people. And she said, so you would give the money to maybe somebody like cleaners or second helpings? And I said, yeah. That idea kind of stuck. We wrote up the plan for the event, put together this idea for the show. I was covering Graham Parsons songs. I, um, you know, kind of shopped it to a couple friends of mine. One guy said, I think I can get Radio Radio to give you the room. We went to talk to Second Helpings, basically said we would like to do this event and um, give the money to you. And they kind of said, that sounds great. And, you know, in talking to them subsequently, it was interesting. We said, why, you know, why did you say that was okay? And they said, well, um, usually people come to us and say, hey, we have this great idea for an event you should do. You should go do that. And we came to them and said, we have an event we want to do. Um, and give you the money. Yeah, we've been doing it now. This will be the 17th year. Tonic Ball is just a, a blast. It's just a, it's a big group of people who uh, love playing for that, those big excited crowds that come out for it and interpret a, you know, interpret an artist that they love. Papa's got a brand new bag. There's a lot of unity with Tonic Ball. Uh, I know we probably touched base on that before, but it, yeah, it just really brings the Indianapolis music scene together. I think the people you get to hang out with at this event, it's, you know, it's a broad spectrum of musicians from across the city that you may have never heard of, that you're usually not splitting a bill with, you know, like, so we are usually with, you know, rock and roll bands that are our friends typically, or whoever's coming through town. But yeah, but yeah, this totally breaks it open. You meet all kinds of people, and it's just a fun party. Like, everybody's there to have fun. There is just like so much love in the room. It is really amazing. The, the, the bands are having a great time. The fans are having a great time. The, um, there's just a spirit of, of giving, and it's a really joyful thing. You know, you would think with that much, the, that many musicians doing stuff for no money. You know, we've never had a musical instrument stolen. You know, at, at, out of all the years we've been doing this, it is just a whole lot of people, you know, hundreds of people volunteering their time to do cool stuff for a great cause. My, my current fiance, soon to be wife, one of the first dates I tried to take her on was to Tonic Ball but you can't get tickets. It's so popular. Um, if you're not buying tickets months in advance, you, you might not get them at all. The Tom Petty night in Radio Radio for Tonic Ball is the best time I've ever had on the stage. That was the first time that I'd ever played for that many people who were all warmed up and excited. I played for big groups of people who weren't excited and little groups of people who were, but that was the first time I ever got to play for a whole room of people who were into it. Except one, and basically I play once a year 
and I get I get on the stage and sing once a year, whether anyone wants to hear me or not. Um, and it is it is a it is a big big fun thing to do to be up there on stage and to and to make all those people happy for a cause that you care about. And Tonic is just so cool from the artist's perspective in that you you have like a goal, you are you, you request the songs you want to play and then you get kind of assigned songs based on demand because you know with the Dolly Parton stage obviously you know they're not going to have people playing Jolene all night long so you get to like dig deep into people's catalogs. We like work really hard to learn the songs and figure out how we're going to do it because because of the nature of the beast like you may get what you want to play, you may not get what one, what you want to play. There might not be any good options for you, you know, like for something that's like really up your alley that you want to do. It's a good exercise for, you know, some of the songs that we've played, it's just good to sit down and learn a song that's not yours or figure out how in the hell can we as a three piece, you know, fairly straightforward uh, rock band do some of these other things and then try to, try to make it our own and then try not to screw it up. I love it because it gets me totally out of my comfort zone doing music I would never um, imagine um, myself doing and James Brown really stretched me um, vocally, energetically on so many levels so it was uh, quite an experience. Instead of just being stuck in your original act you can like, oh well here's the challenge, you gotta play a Cure set or whatever the th uh, tribute theme is that year and uh, it's a lot of fun. I doubt I would have said 17 years ago that Tonic Ball would be on five stages and have, um, you know, and be selling a couple of thousand tickets. Um, so what it's done already has been pretty amazing. And I think Second Helpings has done a really, really good job of developing sponsorships. You know, one of the problems with Tonic Ball for a long time is um, we were putting on a great show and it wasn't making enough money and now it, it makes a lot of money to support a really good cause. One of my favorite things about Tonic Ball, um, besides the fact that I'm a music geek, is how many people have learned about Second Helpings through the Tonic Ball. Um, just thousands of people know what we do because of that event. So Second Helpings is 20 this year. In that amount of time, we have rescued over 29 million pounds of food. It's all usable food that has either been overprepared or overproduced and we have prepared and delivered 11 million meals in that amount of time and graduated 770 adults from our culinary job training. Every day we're rescuing thousands of pounds of food. We um, get it from a variety of places, grocery stores, wholesalers, and then Second Helpings is unique in that we can take already prepared foods. Then we have at least 50 volunteers every day in the building helping prepare and deliver the food. We have 700 active volunteers, so very volunteer driven volunteers outnumber the staff at least two to one each day. Our volunteers um, in our hunger relief kitchen, it's like, um, you know, the Iron Chef every day or when you open your fridge at the end of the day to try to figure out what you're doing for dinner, but times 4,000, um, 4,000 meals a day. My favorite thing is every day about 10, 15 when the vans are pulling out, just knowing that within the hour, thousands of meals will be in the community. I love our graduations. Um, oftentimes our students have never graduated from anything, so it's a big moment. And my very favorite goosebumpy moment is when a graduate comes back to hire other graduates. Indianapolis is a wonderful community and very generous with not only the food donations and their volunteer time, but supporting us financially. You know, the first years I was standing on the street begging people to come in. And then by year three, I was having to start, you know, holding people for a line. So it's been really neat to see how the community's embraced it and, and what's happening.
you know, one of the things I love about Beneficence Records, the whole idea and, and where it came from is it's, it's, um, it's something that grew out of Tonic Ball and continues to extend, you know, all the good things that we wanted Tonic Ball to do. The idea for the label took shape several years ago, um, just kind of me workshopping with different sort of charity things that I got involved with in the Indianapolis area, as well as, you know, the Indiana arts community in general, and as well as my job here. So I've just been kind of workshopping for a long time how to utilize our uh, modern studio facilities here at Ball State in a way that supports the local industry, the local arts community, the local music scene, uh, provides really, really good experience, professional level experience to the students here so that they are able to sort of hopscotch over sort of entry level internship or uh, even, you know, entry level job positions, whether they stay working here in the, in the Midwest music scene or going off to New York, Nashville or LA. But what really got me excited about it is getting involved with Tonic Ball down in Indianapolis things started to really connect that we could use the, um, the artist roster and the different ways that artists were recruited to play this, this charity benefit concert as a, a means of sort of uh, recruitment for a, a record label that then is tied to that benefit and you know ultimately tied to second helpings. Once the grant was approved, or the VBC Fellowship rather, is what it's called, Virginia Ball Center Fellowship, I began actually canvassing not students, but uh, faculty advisors, heads of departments, um, kind of uh, heads of uh, different extracurricular or professional organizations within Ball State to find, kind of cherry pick the best students. Tonic Ball is already such a, a wonderful platform to like bring that music to the community, but it only lasts for one day. Um, and I think that being able to put some of these songs down um, as professional recordings really kind of um, emphasizes the impact of the organization as it already exists and can uh, hopefully add to it in the future. Rolling on take five in three, two, one. It's a once a year event and you know a lot of people love that aspect of it but I think what we're doing with Beneficence Records and this this album specifically is we're kind of giving uh, giving it an accessibility across the year you know it's going to be related to Tonic Ball these artists performed a Tonic Ball uh, on this record and you get to stream it or listen to it whenever you want and I think that can contribute to the excitement and the overall uh, reach uh, of what you know, Tonic Ball already has, and then you kind of grow on that. This is kind of something that I haven't really seen come out of there yet from Tonic Ball. Like, it's really cool that we're able to get all of these bands that play Tonic Ball, this big giant festival that's in Fountain Square, and you know, we, we get to release a record for it, and they get to hear their music heard that they got to play at Tonic Ball. It's different because we have a fan base already and we've got artists that you know we didn't have to go and seek talent we already had talent to choose from a lot of these local artists don't ever get to be recorded so this is like a good opportunity for them we actually are donating 90 percent of our net revenue of all physical and digital sales of our records and releases and all streams so that's a huge number that we're trying to give back to Second Helpings every way we can from anything that Beneficence Records launches. Putting out this album and having sort of this tangible thing that people can associate with um, Second Helpings, like they hold it in their hands or they listen to it on their record player or in their headphones, and every time they're reminded of Second Helpings. What we're doing is helping get the word out, even up here. And I think it's helping to grow the music scene down in India a little bit. Us as a student-run record label, we're just, you know, giving, giving back to the community um, and showing that, you know, being young can actually mean something in an industry that's usually upheld by uh, older people. 
I mean, this is non-profit, I know. So, I mean, most record labels are for-profit. You know, obviously they need to make money, it is a business. With most record labels, um, the money is split between the artists themselves and the record label themselves. Um, there's not really any other uh, record label in Indiana or around that we know of that is doing the charity record label. So, other than you know us making money for a personal reason, we're making money for the betterment of Indianapolis as a community. As you know, Tonic Ball already raises about 180 to 200 grand per year that goes to Second Helpings, and then our album that we're putting out and what we're doing is just adding to that contribution. So it hits kind of on three things. It supports the students, supports the artists involved, and it supports a social cause that I'm, that I'm passionate about. You know, I think just the fact that, you know, this is student run, but I think all the work that we've been doing has been so professional, and I think, you know, that, that speaks to what we're doing here and what Ball State, you know, as a culture, kind of, as a school and institution curates, you know, the highest quality kind of work. Um, even at this, from you know, young kids, from students. It's like we're getting class credit, but it's so real life experience that it's, mm -hmm. it, it doesn't feel like it. Yeah, it is very cool and interesting. Um, it's novel, the idea of putting a bunch of students who have never had this outside of the uh, university experience, and we're all working in a real world environment. There's people that are relying on us to come through, our partners, the people that, at the BBC that are allowing us to do this, everybody that um, is relying upon us kind of just makes this even more real. And it's very cool to be able to do this and to see how it goes even further beyond. The students all are on board totally now, but at first it's really difficult with how complicated the kind of interconnecting web of stuff that came to create this whole project to explain it without seeing it. So once uh, we organized a few trips down to Indy to really see the music scene, and then actually going to Second Helpings and being a part of you know, uh, their rescue mission for a day and touring their facility and, and actually helping in the kitchen and helping deliver food has really brought the context home. Uh, volunteering at Second Helpings has really opened up my eye to nonprofit organizations in Indianapolis and especially Second Helpings being that one. Um, seeing how much goes into it and seeing how much food is being saved. And I, I've never knew that was an organization in Indianapolis until Beneficence Records uh, started its company. Yeah, I think our work with Second Helpings is definitely eye-opening for me just because of how many people are actually struggling in the Indianapolis area. Um, and yeah, just like he said, with our partners and hearing what they say and how they know Second Helpings and they're all willing to help with them too, it's really cool to see it, like a community just support each other. Well, it really just opened my eyes to A, how big of a problem it is in Indy, and then B, what they actually do. We hear about it, but you know, doing the ride along and helping in the back room really showed a lot of what they do and how much food they actually save. So I just cooked in the kitchen. I helped like prepare meals. And just the atmosphere was pretty cool. Like everyone was enjoying what they're doing. And it all seemed just better for the community. It was really nice to go and get to see um, how crazy busy they are and how much work they actually do in any given day. Well, I think everyone should volunteer at least once, you know, <laughs> like why? And then you, you can actually see like the good of everything happening, like being in the hub and seeing all that food and knowing that it's not just like going to waste. You know, it's like at least we're now gonna make something for somebody so they can eat, you know? That's really cool. What, what was mostly eye-opening for me was the graduation that we attended. Um, just seeing like the people that do go through there and the people that we are helping, it kind of puts another ounce of motivation into what we're doing here. The, the record itself will, has potential to generate meaningful revenue for, um, for Second Helpings if, it, if something goes viral or something, and so we have the mechanics all in place to, to funnel that cash directly to, to Second Helpings. But ultimately its goal is to make uh, Tonic Ball an already, you know, like, which is already an in-demand, very large event, even bigger, and help it sustain itself long term. It has grown so much bigger than we ever imagined it to be. 
Now with Beneficence Records, it's grown to even the next stage. So where can it go from here? It's not okay. 